we actually realized that when the pandemic hit, one of the biggest issues for people that got infected was where the virus attaches. And the virus attaches to very specific uh, cells. And those cells are typically in the respiratory system. And that's what causes the respiratory disease that uh, is so debilitating with COVID. And we ration that if in fact, the tissues in the mouth are really just an extension of respiratory tissues that maybe these receptors for the virus would be present in the mouth. And we started looking and indeed we're able to document that in the critical gum tissue that lays up against the tooth, uh, we were able to demonstrate receptors for the, uh, the virus that leads to COVID-19. actually told me earlier that you found pockets that just contained virus? Yeah, what happens is if, uh, if bacteria in general collects between the tooth and the gum, and if it isn't frequently removed, uh, the, the space between the gum and the tooth opens up, and we call that a pocket. And there are many people walking around with pockets in their mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, the bacteria, once they exist in the pocket, they cause a little localized inflammatory response that results in a breakdown of some of the local tissues and these pockets form. That's, a, that's a, a, unfortunately a common thing that people have. We realized that the receptors probably were on the epithelium that lines those pockets, but then more importantly, once we demonstrated the receptors for the virus, we actually were able to go up onto the COVID wards and isolate the, the SARS-CoV-2 virus in these pockets. Now these are COVID positive patients, but us and there's another group um, in Belgium that's working on this project, we're able to demonstrate that indeed the mouth might be a reservoir for virus. And it might be one of those things that explains why some people have a more difficult time dealing with COVID than others. This is fascinating because, you know, what we've heard is uh, thus far, a year into the pandemic, those who seem to be hit harder are people with pre-existing conditions, diabetes, heart disease, uh, you know, maybe some type of cancer. And yet there are those who appear on the surface as very healthy individuals and still get the virus. And, and sometimes it's, they become a casualty of the virus. But what you're saying is now this new research, if indeed the mouth is the reservoir for this this, this could really be groundbreaking. Yeah, there are two things that are really exciting. One is the potential, and we're really early in the research project, but the potential for eliminating these little micro environments of virus, would that make a difference on the course of COVID-19? And then secondly, it provides us with an opportunity for testing that might be a lot more friendly than putting the nasal swab in. So there's a lot of interest worldwide in terms of what we're doing because of the potential to really affect global pandemic management. With what you just shared with us related to gum disease, inflammation, and COVID-19, so many people are isolating, wearing masks, and really trying to do the right thing, keeping social distance. What can we do as it relates to our mouths and gum disease to maybe cut down on some of this potential for the virus to spread? I think there's two messages in this. Uh, the first is that indeed, immediately now in the pandemic, we now have overwhelming evidence that it is safe to come into the dental office. There have been no reports of transference of disease. Get checked, determine if you have any inflammation in your mouth. The key to the whole COVID course seems to be inflammation. And it's turning out that the mouth should be on the list of things like uh, diabetes, like obesity, that increases the inflammation that can drive poor outcomes with the COVID. So get into the office to check and see if you have any inflammation in your mouth. But the second issue is more broad scoped, that it might be a decent strategy for healthy living to try over your lifespan to keep your mouth relatively healthy, not just to have your teeth look good and to have your teeth functioning and not have any cavities, but really to keep your mouth relatively inflammation free over your lifespan. This is good information. Dr. Tim Donnelly, thank you so much. Stay healthy, stay well. Thank you.